Welcome to Astronomy Spotlight for June. My name is Kirk Rosberg. I'm the Planetarium Coordinator here at the Hastings Museum. And as we turn to events in the evening sky, from June 6th through the 8th, Jupiter and Mercury are side by side. And at their closest on the 8th, which is what we're seeing here now, very low right after sunset in the northwest. Now, Jupiter will vanish from the evening sky altogether uh, around the 9th of June, uh, but return to the pre-dawn sky by mid-July. Mercury and the very young crescent moon are rather close to each other on the evening of June 26th. Now, that is 20 days um, after, um, after the Mercury and Jupiter close encounter, and it is in the same spot uh, as before, and roughly the same time, too, right after sunset. As you can see, they are close to each other, even with one of the labels being slightly cut off. It seems lately that all of the interesting evening sky events seem to take place very low on the horizon. Now, the nearly full moon will be near the bright red star Antares, the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion, on the 9th of June, around 10 to 10.30 p.m. in the southeast. Now, next month, we will have more to say about the Scorpion. But right now, they, are, uh, they make a nice pair in the sky, and a very close pair as well. Around the same time, Mars is in the constellation of Leo, uh, the lion, right now. Look for the red planet in the west near the blue-white star Regulus, the heart of Leo the lion, and Leo's brightest star, which, uh, of course, also appears to be the point of what looks like a backwards question mark with a triangle behind the backwards question mark the brightest planet of them all, Venus and Saturn, are still visible in the pre-dawn sky. Venus is in the east and yellowish Saturn is in the south. On June 22nd, which is uh, where the sky is set for right now, Venus and the waning crescent moon will be near each other. Finally, I want to discuss the summer solstice, which is coming up this month. It occurs this year on the evening of June 20th. This is the first day of astronomical summer. The high temperatures associated with uh, summer usually come shortly thereafter. The Earth is tilted on its axis. And at the summer solstice, the northern hemisphere is tilted at its maximum amount toward the sun. We experience the longest day of the year since the sun rises far to the northeast and it sets to the northwest. It is also the shortest night of the year. The summer solstice has long been celebrated all over the world, but of course now in modern times, um, less, less often. In the southern hemisphere, it is the beginning of winter as the earth is now tilted away from the sun at its maximum point. Solstice means sun still or sun stands still as the sun appears to pause on its track north and then slowly begins to move back south. All right, thank you for watching Astronomy Spotlight this month and join me again next month for another edition. Thanks for watching.